Good evening. Yo. Welcome to the Oblivion Show. Oh. Only five minutes late. Only eight minutes late. Whose fault was it? Fucking yours. It was <laughs> first time ever. First, first time ever. That you're late because of me. I'm sorry. It was my fault. I take yeah. the responsibility. Welcome to the Oblivion Show, everybody. I'm Joe E.T. and this is a muppet from another planet. <laughs> Pixelated Craig Dolphin. That's Pixelated Dolphins dot com. <laughs> How are you doing, Gregory? Mate, what a month! It's been crazy, right? Since the last yeah. when was last what was the last show? Was it the start of August, wasn't it? Yeah, it's Before been it's been nonstop. Ground it's zero, been Boomtown, Decibel. Oh yeah. Oh shit! Ground zero and oh, did... fuck parade. Man, we did it's been all of non-stop. that this month. Yeah, was, yeah. was, was Boomtown this where, month? You, yeah, yeah. I mean, where do you want to start? Yeah, Boomtown was epic. It was oh, um, <laughs> it was like Mad Max, wasn't it? It was a dust. It was bomb. like Mad Max. Yeah, yeah. But um, great parties, great music. Yeah, really, really yep. good times. Uh, Decibel was fun. That was actually Decibel turned out to be really nice. Um, like didn't go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was kind of like I played in a kind of terror industrial league stage, which is always in the kind of woods. It's in the forest. And it's always yeah. really nice, but it was a pretty terror heavy lineup. And I thought it was, I didn't know what to expect, but got there. It was an absolutely fantastic sound system. Really, really good setup. So, yeah, turned out to be a great party. Really, really Hey, good. Adam, thanks for subscribing, buddy. Uh, yeah, awesome. And yeah. Ground um, Zero, shout out to everybody that can't remember what happened at Ground Zero. <laughs> <laughs> I remember most of it, I think. Oh, <laughs> I was Honestly, absolutely right? fucked. This, this still keeps happening. I was downstairs, I was talking to Lizette before, and she went, was I talking to Sebastian Promo at Ground Zero? <laughs> <laughs> like, yep. That was all yep. Lizette's fault, because she was passing around that drink, that and it had Sambuca juice, in mate. it, death and juice. Malibu, and all of these other things that I can't normally drink, yep. and that, that's what I'm blaming. It was yep. definitely that, bro. It, it was, that's true. She, right, she, dra- she had drank a litre of Malibu and Sambuca before she finished her set. Fucking and then it, Yeah, and then it got worse. It was At some point, was, I uh, got her to get eventful. me a fridge from the backstage, <laughs> and then she, and she couldn't, and she couldn't come, she couldn't get back down the steps to give it to me. She was sliding down the steps on a bum, <laughs> and it was like 20 minutes after a set. <laughs> Oh my fuck, God. bless Amazing. her. Amazing. And like then we super, had a fuck parade fun. this weekend just gone. Wow. Oh, wow. Always, I've got some videos amazing. that I'll I'll play in a bit for everybody amazing. to see. Yeah. So um, yeah, it's been a, it's been a fun month, man. It's been non-stop. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it's been, yeah, it's been, been great good hanging so out and doing it together, so, yeah. man. Yeah. In a while. Yeah. So many parties, so many good people, so much good music. Yeah. 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 Awesome. What about you? Doing the same shit as me, well, really. <laughs> exactly yeah. the same fucking stuff. Um, yeah, but just with more of a hangover because you've been staying relatively sober, relatively sober. Indeed. Time, so. zero, yo. Oh, I'm on that that old hardcore beer. Yeah. Oblivion show. Anyway, I enough thinking, about I was thinking, us. Can you make? Can you make oh, go a, on. Can you make me a zero zero a zero hardcore beer? It's not very hardcore, it was, is it? Maybe it's it's very, I could call it a pussy beer. <laughs> no, you can't call it a pussy soft beer. core beer. Not, soft core good. beer. Soft core beer, core. maybe. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm down, but yeah, if you can make me a zero, I'll I'll be I'll be good with that. Okay. All right. Anyway, enough of our no. jibber jabber. <laughs> We've got somebody to actually be entertaining and nice on the show today, instead of just me and you being a dick. That to makes each a other. change. It does make a change, <laughs> doesn't it? Right. Let's bring in the lovely Marlin, aka Adamant Scream, Woo! aka Miss Hysteria, hey, aka guys. Lucy Fur. What's good? You okay? Yeah, that's a whole mouthful, huh? Yeah, I'm okay. <laughs> and you guys? Yeah. Yeah. Really good. All good. Really good. All good. Yeah, I'm really okay. I had a big juicy steak for dinner, some Brussels sprouts and blue cheese, so mm. it could be worse. Nice. Yes. And, and taking and it easy now with some sparkling wine and oh. spare the red for later. So. Yeah. Awesome. And what did you do today? <laughs> um, I've been bur- burning baby dolls and Barbie dolls. <laughs> It okay. was just another day at the office. It was uh, totally normal. I enjoyed yeah, I it. I laughed. Pro DJ. Yeah, and what, I was sh- sh- shooting some uh, promo material for my upcoming release. So, oh, yeah, to be a bit creative. Nice. Yeah, nice. So it will awesome. be like a fairy tale, but then a d- bit nasty, with molten baby dolls and stuff and flames. I like it. Sick. Yeah. What's that the what's great. the release on? 
Sorry? What, what's the release coming out on? Uh, on Prospect. Nice. Scheduled oh. for November. So <laughs> finally. Yeah. yeah, I'm very excited. That's, that's good, man. That's really good. All right. Well, thank you for coming on. You look fantastic. Your first guest that's looked this good for a while, I think. You never look fantastic. You both look fantastic. Uh, thank you, man. Greg looks thank okay, you. but in, Greg looks like he's been drawn in Microsoft Paint today. Come on. <laughs> Paint. <laughs> <laughs> I don't look that bad. Oh, honestly. brilliant. Right. Anyway, anyway. I'm going to say hello to some people in the chat. We've got a nice full house by the looks of it. Mr. Butterfist. Got in. J Trusty. Butterfist. Uh, starving insect hello um drastic hedvig Custers, uh, the manufacturer hey hey wanda how you doing i thought you weren't gonna make it today yeah. hey, man. are you here yeah good to see yeah, you i think he must be watching on his phone while he's traveling or something hey luke gurdon hey becky uh hey mr Akurad. um kim chiotto in the house Dean Devastator. Shout out to Cam, who's not here because she's ill. Hope you're okay. Oh, Beta's got. Um, Zonus Maximus. Uh, Lindsay in the house. Uh, DJ. Shout out to Kim Chi, who was at Ground Zero. And I'm sorry I didn't get to chat to you, dude, but you were rocking out so hard to my set. It was amazing. It was great. <laughs> great to see you, man. Yeah. 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 All good. Sorry I didn't get to say hi. I think we saw each other. I think we were dancing next to each other for a while. We were both having a great time. She might have talked to Lizette, but Lizette's <laughs> never going to remember. <laughs> Ground Zero was a good one, wasn't it, Marlon? Yeah, it was amazing. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. One for the books. Yeah, yeah for, for sure. sure. For sure. All right. Well, that's everybody said hello to. Uh, I assume that the audio and the video is all good. I've spent some considerable time trying to troubleshoot issues in the past shows with video and stuff. So I think it's fixed. If it's not, please shout in the chat. That would be great. Oh, hey, Ant Tones has just jumped in. Easy, dude. All right, Made Ant it. Anthony. Hello, mate. All right, so... If you're watching, please give the stream a share. That would be really fucking useful for us. Um, get as many people in here as we can. What have we got on today's show? So we've got the New Blood as ever. I think we've got six or seven tracks in the New Blood. We've got a feature on Marlin about her history, her past, a different alias and a bunch of music from her. Um, we've got information and some leaks for um, the Oblivion Freak Show event. So everybody knows the lineup by now, I hope, but there's some more information to be sharing with everybody. Um, some teases maybe from the Butterfist release that's coming up. Um, and what's hot later on in the show. And then something different. Usual format. Best show in the world. Why change a winning team, eh? <laughs> <laughs> right. First up then, I think we'll go straight into the New, new Blood. blood. First up today on the new blood, we have machinists with a system of eternal ignorance. Let's go. The goal is to destroy all existing religions, save theirs. All existing governments, save theirs. And shackle the mob in a system of eternal oppressive death chained to a computer for the rest of their life.
something quite like a bit of doom core to start the show nice big kick yeah. in the head right yeah the kick whacking mm. kick mm. really enjoyed it what do you reckon greg yeah love the vibe really nice to kind of start with something kind of really slow and proper that kick had some some really big weight to it really liked it but like the the sample needed a bit uh, could have been a lot louder like bring it to the front a lot more and maybe just yeah clean up and brighten up some of the uh, some of the tops um but i really liked it really really liked the vibe really like the sign of slow poundy groove liked all the synths and stuff as well yeah great track yeah nice poundy ball. groove in it i love it when kicks are slow so they can take all the time they need yeah. and, and it, a nice could big use, tail yeah, yeah yeah it's asking for a bit more atmosphere so mm-hmm. maybe as greg said uh, uplift uh, the, vo- the volume of the sample a bit maybe yeah that was the only criticism i could think of as well um everything was solid big heavy um, I'm sorry if somebody's, somebody's really upset that I called it Doomcore in the chat. I'm really sorry, but not sorry at the same time. This hurts my elitism. It's, it's, come on, man. Give me a break. Yeah, but, yeah, but I'm, I'm getting was, really curious to the rest of the track. pretty doomy for me. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. So this is from um, Mike Machinist. Um, he is the guy that runs Extreme Is Everything. Um, I've got a little bit of information here about him, I think. One second. A um, little bit disorganized with my information. Hi, I'm Mike. <laughs> what an in- opening line. Hi, I'm Mike. I'm a bit of a tit. <laughs> what? I'm, I'm based in Liverpool, UK, and I go by the alias Machinist. Let me just bring his page up here. Alias the tit. Uh, Yeah, uh, (laughs) alias machinist. Uh, I produce ultra slow industrial hardcore. Okay, not doomcore then. Ultra slow industrial hardcore. Okay, and brutally hard techno. Uh, He's released on labels like Traumatic, uh, Dresden Schallplatten, and Noisy, um, amongst others. Um, One second, I'm having a fucking nightmare here. I'm not sure it's ultra slow. If it's over 100 BPM, it can't be ultra it's slow. It's 130, so yeah. <clears throat> anyway, that's, that's house my, speed. What are you talking about? Doom some, house. Of my, some of my t- Doom House. <laughs> some of my <laughs> tracks have been played at events by some absolute heroes like Jipe and Manu Lamana. Um, I run Extreme Is Everything show on Toxic Sickness Radio and Industrial Hate on F Noob Techno, as well as my own Extreme Is Everything record label, which caters from anything from hard, in, hard techno, industrial, and speed core anything extreme my tracks have a theme based on observations of the world and its downfall such as this track which will be released on noisy later this year a system of eternal ignorance i hope you enjoy yeah i love it man and i've been following you for a while mike and i obviously i know mike from the uk and uh yeah good stuff nice do me is he a bit of a tip he has been known to be a bit of a tit, yeah. There are, there are a few stories knocking about. <laughs> I won't go into the detail, nice. but yeah, he, he, he knew, <laughs> he, I think he's fair. <laughs> right, good stuff though, Mike. Love you, man. Big up. Yeah, yeah. awesome. Next up, we have got uh, the Carnage Core, Ooh. Doom Slayer. Let's go. Hmm.
like that yeah it was like a 175 tune at 150 yeah, yeah. i loved it yeah yeah i think the the last time they came on the show the carnage call which is the the mass duo we criticized them well i particularly criticized them for sounding a bit samey in their productions and they've come back with something completely off the cuff so I'll yeah i would up. expect uh, the, the straight <laughs> drop a bit sooner maybe yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I liked it. It was a nice groove to it, nice kind of somewhere between dubstep and kind of slow crossbreed, slow breed. Yeah. But um, yeah, nice. Um, short Tight biography. production as ever. You know, they're on it. Yeah. Short, uh, short biography, Mass Duo from Slovakia, Remem members of the Drum Match crew. Uh, our project started from 2019. Our inspiration comes from mu uh, multiple music genres. You can check our other releases on SoundCloud and Spotify. Backstory of the track, The Doom Slayer is the first track we made as Carnage Court and was released on Harder Allowed Recording as part of our first self-destruction EP. Okay, so it's older than I thought it was. I thought it was a newer one. My bad. Hmm, okay, cool. Generally, we love that one, I reckon. What do you think, guys? Nice. Yeah. Anything, any improve okay. for improvement? Just the kick coming in sooner or? Yeah, that was what I expected, but I love a kind of tune like this on a slower tempo. It's really cool dynamics, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's not, it's one of those kind of tracks that's quite nice with your, if you're kind of starting a bit slower to kind of, you know, start pitching things up a bit and getting into, things into that kind of 160, 170 range. Yeah, because yeah, if you want to bring some crossbreed vibes, you have to start at 175 mainly because yeah, yeah. Of, because of the tune. So mm -hmm. it would be cool yeah. to have this in your collection. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Um, da, da, da. So from the chat, um, Kim Chiotto saying, um, one second, let me bring this in. Kim Chiotto saying, very clean sounding as a whole thing, a bit mainstreamish, which isn't a bad thing in my opinion. Jay Trusted saying very nice throbbing kicks. Um, Estia saying I love them snares. Um, yeah, people people generally liking it. Uh, some people Up the are Doompo. Good and, <laughs> say again. Doompo. Of Doompo. Of Doompo. Uh, Luke Gordon saying some really nutty sinister souls kind of DMB dubstepy kind of thing. Um, Butterfist says he thinks the half time section is a bit cheesy, though. I think that's all fair, but it's good. It's good. Next up, we have got Cement Tea with hey, he's give, back. Me, give Me Your Heart, Augustine Organ Harvesting 101. Let's go.
Well, that was a trip. I really enjoyed it. I really liked that. It reminded me of um, like early French Corey, Laurent Ho, Coney, Ingler. Coney, kind of. that's what I was going to say. Coney, right? it reminded me yeah, a bit yeah. like that. Uh, yeah, Coney that and like early peaky stuff as well. French, French core stuff. I really enjoyed it. I mean, it needs a bit of work like production wise. Need Like the bass needs to be a bit bigger, a bit tighter and stuff. But, and I think it could have really done with a lot more uh, transitions and turnarounds on the bars and stuff just to break up the patterns a lot more but i i really like the vibe i i really enjoyed it funky vibe yeah 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 marlin yeah it really yeah. reminds me a bit of the old enzyme x uh, track also as greg says the kick needs a bit more work and we could have mm -hmm. a little bit more exciting transitions but the vibe is there yeah 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 that was the one thing for me was the kick felt a bit buried underneath the rest of it Maybe just a bit of EQ work to let the kick yeah. shine. A bit give more it some impact. more punch. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Needed, yeah, bit more punch, bit more, bit more bottom control and stuff like that. Bottom control. I also need some control. bottom control once in a while. <laughs> <laughs> Who doesn't? Who doesn't? Um, yeah. So, C Over T. Hmm? <laughs> Mr. Cement T. Um, 22-year-old experimental producer from Brazil. Since 2016, makeable, making multiple genres of music, mostly within the industrial, rhythmic noise, and experimental genres with hardcore, DMB, techno, and other influences. I have more than 100 releases under the Cement T moniker. He's 22, by the way. 100 Amazing. releases. Yeah, and, that's right. And counting. Send me your music. Yeah, yeah, and all my music is is made using a free door and free DST VSTs, except for mastering. I have quite a lot of influences to more known drum and bass and crossbreed artists like KRTM, Koo, Panacea, Lime Wax, and Current Value, but also more exper experimental out there artists such as Pal, Hypno Skull, Slave to Society, and Muslim Gores, and many more. Shout no out strangers to the show. Yeah, yeah, we saw him at the weekend, didn't we? Uh, I, saw I didn't. Him. I think someone yeah, introduced yeah, me yeah, to yeah. him. Yeah, I know he was around. I, I didn't see him, but yeah. Yeah, he was anyway. at the foot parade. Yeah. Anyway, um, keep up the great work, dude. See yeah, my I think he's yep. he's recently quit his job in pursuit of just making money from music. If I remember Good reading that in Discord correctly. Um, so luck. yeah, keep going, man. Keep sending music in. We enjoy listening to it. It's always different. Always yep. trippy and experimental, and that's uh, that's good yeah, in our eyes. So, uh, yep. yeah. Um, what the chat's saying? Um, if you, da, 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 da. Uh, I make trippy music, but I can't even tolerate alcohol. Okay. Um, da, da, uh, yes, I work on music full time. Yes. Um, da, 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 weird sound, crazy atmosphere, mate. This track is nuts. Liking its no nonsense grinding. Jay Trusted loves a bit of no nonsense grinding. Okay. Um, yeah, awesome. All good. All good. All good. Shout to Mike Machinist who turned up in the chat after his track's been played. How are you doing, the lad? Your tit. Never. <laughs> 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 right. Next up, we have got. Oh, this is good. Right. A D D L to be bound. Let's go.
I thought that was heavy, man. It was heavy. Really Absolutely. Enjoyed. Yeah, really interesting, nice, chewy, crunchy, tasty bass. I love um, the trippy intro. It was like a moderate track or something like. Yeah, you didn't yeah. know what to expect. Yeah. I wasn't. I didn't know what to expect. No, that, no, uh, with the drop and stuff. So it was good. Yeah. yeah, really good. Nice. I love yeah, this. this is, yeah, something I will uh, play definitely. Awesome. Uh, this is ADDL, a Bristol-based producer, DJs, and early days sound engineer. He's looking to trigger people's fight or flight response at every opportunity. I was first inspired to produce after seeing Noisier at Boomtown 2015. Stigma in particular was a game changer. It all devolved from there. I moved to Bristol to be closer to the heart of the... Oh, hey Marcel, thanks for becoming a member, man. Um, I moved to Bristol to be closer to the heart of the UK electronic music scene. So far, it has not disappointed. Oh, oh, nice. Uh, sorry, random nerds just gifted 20 memberships. Wow, thanks dude is... respect Thank randy thanks very much everybody's getting memberships in the chat whoosh <laughs> nice uh, anyway back to addl sorry for interrupting that um so far it's not disappointed i've had the opportunity to not only meet but actually become friends and collaborate with some of the most interesting talented hard-working people i've ever met and people i considered personal heroes recently i had the opportunity to muck in at jungle syndicate 2022 debatably the best rave in the uk <laughs> anyway uh, even more <laughs> recently i stepped in to fill a slot on the phlegmgasm stage at bolter technically my first ever festival show i'm counting it i don't care um i have an untold wealth of music to be released in the very near future watch out amazing big up man a yeah, nice write up as well drum lab that's what addl stands for oh really oh yep. right this is a friend of uh ash schemo uh, he'd submitted before and somehow this hadn't got through and I messaged Ash saying have you got any fresh shit for us and uh, he was like John sent you something and you haven't played it and I dug through I was like wow so sorry about that bro uh, it's fucking sick yep nice really really cool uh, and if you see on his um, on his Facebook page here there's a load of um, a sample pack on his page for free to download by the looks of it let's have a look at this <clears throat> oh no it's 10 10 pounds for a sample pack over there um but yeah cool stuff i'm gonna send this link into the chat so if you lot are interested a bit more you can go and get into that um i just want to say hello to a couple of people in the chat gauge system hey buddy how you doing oh um, where did, where did yeah, oh oh gauge um, i tried to start an orgy at um, he did. boomtown didn't he <laughs> God bless yeah, him. he did. Yeah, he was having the time of his life sat in the backstage because at Boomtown they've got this app now, Marlin, for like finding your friends on the on the site. But it's also got like all of these different chat rooms that you can make your own chat room. I've seen these kind of festival uh, apps, haven't you? Where you can yeah, like you put your money your on it and all that shit. You want to see and anyway, and you can he's... find your friends on the site on the yeah, yeah, festival yeah. site. That's the Using idea. The okay, yeah, which is cool. But, in the in the app, he set up a chat room like arranging a gangbang at this festival. Oh, and, like, to start a huge forest forest orgy, was, wasn't it? It was just trolling oh, no, everybody. Was it? No, it, well, oh. it, there was like thirty guys in there and one one girl or something like that. <laughs> and, and, and he was rocking yeah. around with a t-shirt that said "Love Dick, Hate Men" or something like that on his t-shirt. What was for? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> like, guy. <laughs> That was Amazing. hilarious, bro. I, yeah. I hope. Well, he's, he's in the chat happened, anyway. He says, That's not, that, yeah, yeah. yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah, and you yeah. went to try and find it, and you were on your own in the bushes. We know, we know. Um, <laughs> I saw just looking Gemma, for the gangbang. Just looking, yeah, just flashing his torch in like Always. Morse code. Three flashes for yes, yeah. two for no. <laughs> um, <laughs> hey, Gemma, who's who's arrived in the chat? How's it doing, going, girl? Are you okay? Uh, all right, cool. awesome. Awesome, awesome. Next up, we have got Red Flag. So this is a couple of the guys from the community, uh, Mad Madra and Estia, I believe. And this is the second oh, revision. Gosh. Yeah, the second revision of a track that they've sent before and we've given feedback on. Okay, so this is uh, updated since it was sent last time. So I'm going to play it now. This nice. is Red Flag Tarnished. Hey.
Wow, those guys have come a long way. Yeah, that was kind of fun. That was the kind of track that we were playing in in, uh, in the fuck parade, and people were just like dropping mosh pits in front next to the uh, <laughs> next to the <laughs> truck, right? Yeah, <laughs> man. Yeah, indeed. Uh, it's loads better than the the last one. The last one, I remember, there was some significant problems with structure, um, and the kick was completely lost underneath everything. If I remember rightly, so the, correct the, the me if I'm wrong. It still needs shot. work. It still needs still work. Needs work. Yeah. It needs it needs some it needs some top and it needs some click on the on the front end of it on the transient. Especially when you can hear it when the kick uh, kick rolls. It's almost just kind of like just falling into each other into itself, but. Um, but it's a fun track, right? That's a kind of throw your beer and punch your best yeah, mate. Party vibe. Kind of yeah. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, and absolutely. I think this is really personal, but I like to kick it the most without the break samples. It had the more speed, yeah. but it's personal taste, yeah, maybe. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So Red Flag That's, is um, a new hardcore project by two European hardcore fans, Madra from Ireland and Estia mm -hmm. from Germany. As we both have been producing and DJing over the last few years, towards the end of the pandemic, we decided to come together and make some of the music that we'd end up playing for podcasts and events. Um, we submitted this track a few months ago to the New Blood and got a wealth of great feedback. We took it back to the cleaners, polished it up and really happy with the current state of the track, but we're always looking to improve. Inspirations include most of the hardcore spectrum, mainly focusing on the high BPM range and industrial sounds. Tarnished is our first main project, aiming to polish it up and get a label release sometime over the next months, if possible. Nice. Nice. Yeah, nice, cool. nice. yeah I think you guys got something really nice in here. Yeah, it's a lot, a lot of fun, a lot of high energy. I, it's it's one of those we we where I, I talk to a lot of producers who get kind of hung up on trying to get a tune as perfect as they can and never end up finishing it. And sometimes you just got to go, okay, this is just good enough right now, and I'm going to move on. I'm just going to kind of you know it may not be as perfect as I want it to be, but it's good enough and it's got a good vibe. I'm going to move on and just carry on, you know, making more and more tracks. But um, yeah, I really liked it. I thought it was a good, really good vibe. And it's just a lot of fun, isn't it? Yeah, party yeah. trick. Yeah. Is there any Absolutely. any like technical advice that you'd give these guys, Greg? Because I know that they're, I wouldn't say desperate, but they really want some tips. Is there anything that you could, well, either of you could, could tell them? I mean, well, I guess one of the most important things is try and reference your tracks. I'm sure they do, but if they don't reference your tracks against kind of stuff that you really rate the kind of like sound that you're going for and like use something like metric ab or whatever you know a kind of nice ab plugin where you can flick between your track that you're working on and, and uh um you know uh something that you want to compare it to and try and keep everything in the ballpark as well and you know you can find um i don't know igor is a great um example but find people who have like clean kicks in their tracks and then just like use you know reference against those kinds of things to see you know is my kick sounding bright and full enough does it have the kind of the characteristics i want it to does it sound tight enough in the bottom end yeah um, i think the course characteristics are really really good in indeed it's just the technical stuff yeah 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 yeah, yeah totally yeah awesome stuff I'm okay looking forward to hearing more from all right thanks guys um Madras Nuts has noted in the chat. Um, shout to Nagasaki, who's just jumped in. Hey, bro. How you doing? Nice to see you. Um, people in the chat are liking it. People are saying that they would play it out. They would dance on it. Luke Gurdon says, my ears are dripping. Um, <laughs> people liking the artist name, Red Flag. I think it's a good artist name, too. Um, yeah, there we go. Awesome. Right, we've got one more track in the new blood, and it's from Mr. Poly Tight. Poly Tight, Ooh, is, Poly yeah, Tight, yeah, yeah. Cool. Shoot these pranksters. Y'all fucking with holes. I'm a little too famous to shoot these pranksters. Be 
king. That's really cool. Well, I spent most of that track in hysterics, and I'll tell you why. Because I've got <laughs> I've got Rene Gade system in my inbox saying, that gangbang best not be my fucking legacy now, you cunt. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it will. It will. <laughs> but anyway, back to the back to business here. Um, I thought that was really cool. It's nice. Had kind of nice, really, really cool. Ignian, Ignian Igor vibes. Yeah, definitely. Uh, this is Poly Tight. Uh, he, tight. That's yeah, a cool man. Name. Yeah, he, he was Carl uh, Canny. I didn't even know anyone was born Carl Canny for like thirty years. That's pretty yeah, cool. It's back. Is it? Yeah, yeah, shows how much I'm out of touch with everything. Yeah, yeah, he runs uh, Havoc in Austria. I've played over there with the uh, Sub Chaos Engine and a few other people. So that's nice. his night. Yeah, it was really good. The chat really, really liked it as well. Everyone's saying Sick solid mode. track. Um, nice kick. Uh, sounds polished as hell. Uh, decent. Valter. Hey, Valter. Didn't see you there. He said it's great. Um, gauge system saying loving the kick. Uh, Estia likes it. Um, Kim Chiotto says the transition part feels so Legend of Zelda. <laughs> it's very specific. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm not sure about this one. Too many bad words, not very Christian. Okay, <laughs> okay. Um, the breakdown was fucking sick, could have done with it being a touch longer. I thought it was banging. I thought it was not far off like a finished track. It certainly sounded totally. from a sound design point of view. It was clean. It was good. It just needed some finishing mm. touches maybe to gel it together a little bit so that it felt a bit more polished. That, that's all I could really say about mm. it. M Marlin, what do you think? Oh, I can't hear you, Marlin. Mind. Are you on mute? I was on mute. <laughs> I'm here. No, I <laughs> I would say cool play. I would, a track. I will play definitely. Yeah. Yeah. It sounds very complete to me. Yeah. I would probably drop nice. it as well. Polly, if you're listening, yeah. Send it send the full thing over and uh 
Let Good us show. drop it. Yeah, send it over. Nice. All right. Anything? Anything more from you, Gregory? <laughs> No, that's me. I'm good. Okie dokie. Well, <laughs> ladies, gentlemen, and others, that was the end of... New Blood. New Blood. New Blood. Ooh, oh, Polly's in the Ooh, chat. Hey, I didn't Polly. expect... I didn't uh, expect the tracks to be this good. All the tracks. Yeah, we, we yeah, really have quite a, good, quite a good standard. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's quite a nice community and people come back and, you know, develop and grow with us and it's it's nice. Yeah. yeah. It's really, really yeah. nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was the end of the new blood. The next section is all about you, Marlin. But before we do about that, uh, all, all about you. Yeah, but before we do that, I'm going to talk about our forthcoming event, The Freak Show. So if you guys need the toilet, or anything, then feel free to disappear now and I will spout a load of propaganda at everybody. Okay. Right. So um, if you're not already aware, I don't know where the fuck you've been hiding, but this is for, uh oh, uh oh, we have a problem. Uh-oh, wait a minute. What's mm. happening? I don't know. Ha-ha! It worked. Something with the right. connection? Uh, there no, it it's is. okay. It's okay. Right, so this is our lineup for Freak Show Halloween weekend in Manchester, October the 29th. We have got the outside agency, Art of Fighters, the DJ producer, Dormouse, Timon, Jipe, or DJ IPE, as he likes to be referred to. Uh, Brian Fury, Tripped, Thrasher, Dolphin, Death Machine, Joey T, and Devastator. Um, I've just received a notification from YouTube that there's a problem. Um, anyway, um, so... This is happening in Manchester at the Cable Club, uh, which is the same venue as our last event, if you came to that. And yeah, I think it's one of the sickest lineups we've ever put on, for sure. And certainly one of the sickest lineups ever put on in the UK. I think there's something for everybody here. We tried to cover all bases. Um, we have, you know the gods of industrial as it were, but we also try to look left and right a little bit as well with a booking for like art of fighters, for example, nobody expected that it's like quite left field for a lineup like this, but you know, people have to understand that Christian art of fighters is well seasoned um, and uh, quite widely talented artist who makes quite a lot a large spectrum of music and whilst being famous for his anthem stuff he does make a lot of industrial stuff as well which will appeal to the crowd and he's working on new shit so you know i think that's one of the the, the biggest surprises in there as well as that we've got dormouse first time i've booked dormouse first uh, i've wanted to book him since forever and it's kind of a uh 20 year in the making booking to have him play at Oblivion. So I'm particularly proud about that. Um, somebody saying in the chat, Auto Fighters doing Italian Millennium, Millennium Hardcore set. Yeah, he'll be doing him. He's not going to come and pretend to be something that he's not. I booked him to be Art of Fighters. So he's going to come and do his thing. He's the, one of the best in his field at what he does. So yeah, of course. Um, Yep, someone's saying all about Timon. Timon hasn't played out that much the last couple of years. He's been busy in the studio. He's got some exciting stuff. And he's my homeboy, so it'd be a pleasure to have him in the backstage. So uh, I'm looking forward to that. Um, da, 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 da. Yeah, I mean, the lineup speaks for itself. Um, as well as the lineup being sick, there's some other things that are coming alongside that. So if I just go to... Facebook here, and I go to show. Come on. So here's the event page. If you're not already down with this, then I'm going to put this into the chat now so you can check that out. Um, 
but with regards to the different tickets that we have available, I'll go to the actual ticket page. That's probably the easiest way. Different types of tickets we've got here. We've got a pre-party ticket, which you can add on to your standard ticket. That is just for pre-party entry. Um, we've got a standard ticket, um, this one, because the rest are all sold out. It's selling really fucking quick, actually. So we've got the standard ticket, which is standard event entry. Uh, the late bird, which will come next, but we have VIPs, which are available. VIP ticket, there are only late birds available. That includes a standard ticket, pre-party ticket, a limited edition freak show t-shirt, poster, a drink, and queue jump. That's a pretty fucking good deal. And if you've already got a standard ticket, you can upgrade your to a VIP here as well. So there's a couple of things that I wanted to talk about regarding that. We've got, first of all, it comes with a t-shirt. I wanted to show you guys this t-shirt because Cam's absolutely smashed this. This is the t-shirt that's going to come with the VIP ticket at the Freak Show event. And as you can see, it's fucking insane. I'm going to zoom in on that design. I can. Boom, boom. Yeah. That is the design. Again, cam art design absolutely knocks it out of the park. Um, I'll put a link in the chat to Cam's page. I guess most of you people in here already know all about her since she's our design, but there we go. Check it out. Go and give her page a like because she's sick. And if you want any artwork doing, get in touch with her. So this t-shirt will be available as part of the VIP ticket. There's Cam's page. Uh, so yeah, there isn't a great deal more to say about that. There is a pre-party about to be announced. And that pre-party is... Da, 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 there's going to be three people and it will start at six o'clock till eight o'clock. And generally we have people playing alternative styles. So I'll let you try and guess from that list who might be playing something a little bit different at the pre-party. And yeah, tickets are going fast as fuck. And I recommend you get one because last time we did a party like this, it was sold out and people were chasing around after tickets. So yeah, what else is there to say? I guess I could give away a couple of tickets since we're here. So... What we'll do is, if we go over to the Oblivion page, let's go over here. All right, so if we head over here and let's say on this post here, this flyer, head over to this. I'm going to put the link in the chat. Click on that, head over to here, go into the comments. Tag three friends and share this image on your social media. Just click share. And that's it. And I'll want to go back to this at the end of the show and see who from the chat has written in there. And I'll pick a couple of people and you can get some free tickets, free drinks, free t-shirts, fucking free everything. What's not to like? Right. I think that is enough propaganda. Oh, Ooh. back. Yeah. What a party. What a party, what a party that's going to be. I know. I can't wait. So, not uh, enough up some, tempo, though. Somebody wants some donk at the pre party. There's not going to be any donk I, at the pre party. Add a bit Sorry. of doom. <laughs> a bit of doom. We had some doom at the last one, actually. Steph played some doom at the last one. If I remember. Last time up we had. Doom pool. Yeah. Mm. We had. Uh, um, Steph playing old French stuff and Doom. Um, we had Technoist playing old hardcore. And Gareth uh, Thrasher played Jungle and drum and classic drum and bass. It was really cool. Really, really cool. So, uh, yeah, get over there. Get sharing. I'll put it in the chat again. Boom. And, uh, yeah. Go and do that shit. So next up, we have... Got is the stream running okay by the way? Because Facebook Seems is telling me that I've got problems with it running, but I don't see them 
So Good shout job. out in the chat if you're noticing any problems. Let me know. Uh, one second. Yeah, I think we're all good. Okay, fine. Right, Marlin, it's time to talk about you, my friend. Oh, my God. Okay. So, yeah. So, you are Adamant Scream, you are Miss Hysteria, and you are Lucy Fur. Some yeah. people didn't even know that. No, really? No, I posted it, like, on the, posting the picture up today, and people were like, oh, I didn't, I didn't even know it was different the same person so uh yeah, <laughs> yeah so this should be enlightening for a few people oh, so yeah how, first of all thank you for coming on to the show we really appreciate mm -hmm. it it's nice to hang out with you always but to be more formal and talk about things and put things on record a little bit is nice so yeah, yeah this is a much bit different than the normal backstage chats <laughs> <laughs> a little yeah. bit well but by the time we get to the end it'll just be the same uh, it's normally just trash okay, by then okay. <laughs> i trust you on that <laughs> um so yeah let's i always like to start these things the, the classic cheesy kind of way when we do an interview and that's to go all the way back and all talk about back, yeah. all the way back talk about your beginnings with music not even like not even when you started djing but i'm like interested in what your musical background was before you did that what what's what was your first like exposure to music and what how did that what all kind before? of happen i always wanted to play the piano so piano was my first uh thing with music piano lessons and I got a little turntable for my parents uh, for Christmas, and I could play my Pippi Longstocking records when I was <laughs> little and sing along. And uh, yeah, that developed to um, playing. Uh, I got some lessons and I got into rave a little bit and into techno a little bit when I got older. And I started to do, uh, to start, uh, I started DJing when I was 13 pretty young at some school parties just with my home setup with my home amplifier and cd player and stuff so yeah i always wanted to be creative with the things i got i got like cassette decks i got like now yeah, this piano recording through my microphone and uh trying to um create something and yeah. when we had glim, uh, gym class in high school, we could play our own uh, cassettes. And I always played my own tracks. Oh, wow, really? The annoying, nice. <laughs> annoyance well of the good. other kids, yeah. <laughs> because it sounded terrible. It was like I, I had some beats on my keyboard playing and I, I put them up as fast as I could and mixed them <laughs> through my microphone with another cassette deck and then added <laughs> some vocals with another cassette deck. And yeah, th Amazing. they were my first tracks. Yeah, it sounds yeah, like yeah. Scott Chegg or something at school. <laughs> yeah, I was ten or eleven back then. Yeah, amazing what you do. Like when you're trying to, when you don't know what you you're supposed to do, and you just try to do whatever you can to make things work yeah, and just yeah. layer it's things. Simple on top stuff. Into it. Yeah, 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 yeah. So awesome. I was always experimenting with the stuff I've got. So yeah, yeah, I always try to be creative and stuff. And when I was 13 or 14, I got Fast Tracker on my PC from a friend. So I wow. started to create my own tracks. I really made some tracks and Fast Tracker was amazing with Snake and stuff. <laughs> so I really put in some, hour, some hours. Yeah. 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 And that was wow. what? How old were you there when you were using Fast Tracker? Did 14. You say? Yeah. 14. 14. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. I was really young. Yeah. And it was the same guy who lent me some uh, records to practice with some real turntables. I saved up some money, so I bought some real turntables. And I started out with some classic trends to practice. Yeah, that's uh, quite something different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. So what were your first uh, DJ gigs then? Were they like at, at school as well or? Yeah, there were school parties, yeah, yeah. I brought is my speakers from home and my amplifier and my CD players. And then I just played, <laughs> I had a, a box full of uh, CD singles. I still got it. Like all the, the main biggest hits from then. And, mm -hmm. and halfway the night, I always blew up everything. So there were always problems with the sound <laughs> and stuff. But I was always fixing it. Yeah. And then, yeah. Isn't wow. it crazy how many guests we have on, Greg? And it's always the same, like a similar story, like got some turntables, 
fucked up the the school disco or set up yeah. a youth club yeah. got in trouble yeah. like it's 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 crazy how, how many sp- uh, stories are running parallel kind of thing it's uh I yeah like i can imagine because yeah. first at first i had my mixer i got I got it from my parents when i was 12 or 13 but i had nothing to connect it to just the faders and i would be like just playing around yeah. with the faders like one yeah. day one day wait for it <laughs> <laughs> amazing so you sent me some pictures and I, you said that this was your friend um, that you st- started to learn to DJ with. Oh, this is a... these pictures are so terrible. Oh, but... look at this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> look this at those was in braces. France, actually. Yeah, the braces. We did some they... school parties together. Yeah. They look we like almost like, like a 25 grill. guildens. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh my god! Cute. Yeah, <laughs> but we know each other from from kindergarten, and we're still friends. I think, yeah, she comes to uh, she comes with me regularly to parties, so she might be a familiar face for some of you. So, so what was your? <laughs> That's um, terrible. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take it off the screen. It's gone. It's gone. <laughs> so, what was your kind of first exposure to hardcore then, or like hardcore or, or drum and bass? Hold on, before you before you answer that, oh. what 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 was your what was your first DJ name? Oh, we didn't have a DJ name really. Okay. You just went, yeah. Good Laura answer. And Mali. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we had a DJ name, but I can't recall uh, yeah. what it was. So, I, so I yeah, but would be ter- yeah. What was your exposure to hardcore then? How did you actually get into that? Well, I think it became. Um, we were listening to MTV and to the radio, and then you got like a lot of rave. I bought a lot of rave CDs, like Rave Parade and stuff, and the, and and some happy hardcore. And I think those uh, were the first tunes that got me into this um, particular uh, uh, part of rave hardcore. Mm-hmm. And it was, yeah, a bit commercial. Yeah, I was young, so I was listening to Mark O and Marusha and uh, all that kind of stuff. Mm. So quite early on then, you... Yeah, like you, sing along. <laughs> <laughs> quite early on then, you met Patrick uh, Lunatic, like not long after that picture, actually. I think 2003, Is that have I got that right? No, we met no. when I was 17. So still very young. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I felt really attracted to the more aggressive sounding styles of music, not just hardcore, but also like metal and everything But that was kind of aggressive because puberty was really difficult for me. As for anyone who is like 13 or 14 and struggling with finding out who they are and connecting with their peers and stuff. Mm -hmm. So I felt really attractive to uh, a scene or a group of people or a place where I could really express that kind of energy. And I really found that in hardcore Mm. back then. So how did you meet uh, Patrick then, the lunatic? On the party, yeah. Just off off a party? I was kind of a... Yeah, I was kind of a party animal. I started going out and drinking when I was 13. <laughs> was, uh, that was pretty early. Yeah, and then we met at a party. We just got in touch and talked a bit, I think. It's so long ago. Yeah. Yeah, it's really a long time ago. But anyway, he found it really interesting that I was into music and I was playing. So he came to my place and I saw he saw turntables and he was like, whoa, that's cool. And uh show me what you got and we play together and he booked me on my first gig in 2001 in the hague oh in nice Clip so, avenue we, we, yeah I oh, remember nice. that so good yeah. and, this, and this is when oh, you actually became old. miss hysteria then you actually called that then that was your yeah were you still yeah i was i was 17 and i had to think of a name and i was like yeah what and, and i was uh, a big fan of muse and i got this track hysteria i was like yeah miss hysteria that's fun Nice. So it's not really like a deep thought behind it or something. <laughs> yeah. Just a team thinking of something. Yeah. So and at first, got... I started playing solo. 
Uh, it was later okay. that we decided to, to start to become a duo. Okay. Okay. And then you started, I guess, you well, obviously you started making music together um, and you got some quite some releases actually together on Enzyme, Mega Rave, Hell's Recordings. Um, and you guys, you even started up your own label. I didn't know this. I did. I only found this out today, but Bass Machine records was was your label yeah and it was not big but we really loved to do the whole creative process by ourselves so i even did some artwork back then and it was really if you could see it now it was really yeah simple let's let's see it oh (laughs) 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 just to to create the music and to create the artwork and 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 to um pick up the records at the factory physical and yeah. and we we would literally bring all the records to the uh to Risha and they would sell it yeah just to got yeah. the whole process that was that was really fun i know it well that's what we do now yeah. and i'm yeah i love it so and we were learning you, we were both young so which uh which one did you do the graphic design for marlon all, all the first ones with the statues I was really into uh, history, so I was like, yeah, let's use some old statues. It will be fun. The Obsessions EP. Okay, yeah. yeah. <laughs> cool. Nice. That's not bad, you know. I've certainly seen a lot worse artwork from that era. It's simple. But yeah. We were happy with it. Yeah, nice. So you had you also I'd uh, noticed that you had quite some artists on here like uh, Party Razor, um, in the pre up tempo days. Um, yes, Chaim, uh, ba- Bartok, Bartok, yeah, uh, Tiam. Yes, D Spirit. Mm. Cool. What else? Yeah, I did not know that about you. That you had this label. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, I'll press the wrong button. So I guess from two thousand and uh, two thousand and three through to two thousand and six was pretty mental. Now two thousand and seven, or well, actually, I'm looking at the timeline here, all the way from two thousand and three through to like two thousand and thirteen, when you got signed to Enzyme Records. That was a really quite a lot of output for you guys. Yes, so absolutely. How, how, how were you um what were you how, how were you collaborating was he just coming over to your place and you were working on stuff together or were you how was that working with uh, uh the collapse we did with Joan, we went to france to work with him that was okay. very fun yeah we slept over at his place and then we worked two or three days on two tracks so that was very nice party racer came over to our place he slept at our place and we had fun and make music so that was always really cool to do Nowadays we swap more. I were, I prefer to work work alone and then send my stuff and then get it back and work on it. But back in the days we always meet up to work together. Yeah, I suppose it was a lot easier. Yeah, well, you, sorry, didn't lot have, you didn't difficult. have internet where you, you could. Yeah. yeah, yeah, you couldn't you couldn't send stems to people, could you? Back no, in the day, no, it was like, no. Yeah, <laughs> it's impossible. And it's so yeah. much more efficient to send stems, but because if you team up to work together physically, it's like twenty percent work and eighty percent talk, drinks, fun. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Did uh, so? Base Base Machine Records came to an end in two thousand and eleven. What was the the reason for that? Did was it too much work, or did it just naturally come to an end? What was the? Well, I think it was naturally. We signed up at yeah. Enzyme Records, so it was no use anymore. Yeah, yeah. How did that come about? The uh, Enzyme Records uh, signing, because it's quite a big label. I bet it was quite a a big deal for you then. Yeah, yeah. It was a big step in our career, and I'm still really proud of it. And it. Yeah, we had a lot of contact with Aaron Nosferatu, and we did a mm-hmm. collab together for his album on Strength. We did the track, it's called Technology Exceeds, and we had a lot of contact with Conrad. He's uh, a big inspiration to me. And yeah, they were like, yeah, maybe your sound could actually fit 
the profile of enzyme. And we sent some demos to Patrick Rufnick and he was like, yeah, could, could be working. And then we, yeah, he asked us to sign and we were very proud and we, that's what we did. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Really cool. Really cool. Yeah, that was really cool. Yeah. So is that, is that when you first met Comrade around that time? No, no, we met long ago. I think in 2000 and uh, I should look uh, look it up on Party Flock and and eight maybe at yes, one of, yeah. of his first first gigs. We were there. We can we can we can look it up. Or I actually remember up. where it was in uh, Nykirk, I believe. Conrad is a Fidian, ah. by the way, for the chat. If anybody's not familiar with the first name, if you look that up, Marlin. Meantime, I'm going to show some more more pictures that you sent. Oh um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you don't sound too excited. <laughs> <laughs> I send them to you myself, so uh, <laughs> no. I'm only to blame. So this is 2002, your first gig that you were talking about before. Yes. Oh, that was in Utrecht. Yeah. And this, this is, is 2004, right? 2004. Oh, yeah. we were such babies. <laughs> 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 Two thousand six. Oh my god! Wow, so crazy! And looking back at it, like it is. And, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good old twelve tens. Yeah, I was. I was actually looking at. I was looking for an Ableton set, like a really old one today, and I was like, look back, and I knew it was somewhere around two thousand and six for a, like a, it was an old mix I did years ago. I was trying to find some of the tracks, so I loaded it up, and I was like, looked in Ableton, I was like, oh my god, did I really? It was like 10 track, ten tracks wide and like something just filled with like breaks and kicks and just all sorts of, I was like, this is the most complicated set ever. I was like, and I was just like, <laughs> like I needed like six crossfaders to mix everything together. I had no idea I put all that together. Funny, funny is that, huh? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you kind of think, wow, I made that really difficult for myself, but it was loads of fun. <laughs> <laughs> did, did but like it was pick. more difficult back in the days. Yes, so, I guess so, yes. yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. yeah, back in the vinyl days. Yeah. You're looking very smart there. Yeah, yeah. Just, just on your way to a wedding. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that was proper practicing, uh, uh, learning to play with vinyl. You have to play for hours and hours and hours. It yeah. was not just like, what does it button do? And then, yeah, you're a superstar DJ. You really had to yeah, yeah. train your ears yeah. and practice, practice. For sure. Sure. Um, right. So, uh, Bass Machine Records ended. You got signed to Enzyme Records, um, yeah. and I guess that leads us into the first bit of music that we want to play. Actually, yeah. We've got Lunatic and Miss Hysteria. First contact here. First contact. So. When's this from? Two thousand and thirteen. Yeah, two thousand thirteen. So. Wow. Nearly 10 years yeah. ago already. 10 years ago. Wow. That's crazy, right? Yeah. All right, let's play it.
Thanks. That's beautiful. Yeah, yeah, still, yeah. Fantastic. Still good. Still stands up. Well, yeah, I mean, so yeah, just good music is good music, right? The fact that it made yeah. 10 years ago has got nothing to do with it. I mean, the production yeah, but, is fantastic. It's thanks. Excellent. But the f- funny thing is, back in the days, 2014, you couldn't really play this track on a mainstream hardcore style party yeah, yeah, yeah. because it was too weird or experimental mm-hmm. yeah crazy yeah I, I, yeah i would i would that's something i would definitely play 100 percent, fantastic cool yeah thanks. people people in the chat absolutely loving it uh saying that the da, 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 the synth scream at the first drop is bone chilling somebody wrote s tier uh saying somebody saying please release it on vinyl i had to check that it didn't come out on vinyl did it no 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 I, I was i couldn't yeah. believe it i just checked back i was like no way uh kim chiato says it's one of my all-time favorites um the, the, the good yeah, old but I'm, I'm really happy that that these old tracks are so well received right now because yeah. in, back in the days there wasn't really place for this kind of music yeah back in 2014 if i would have released it in 2004 yeah maybe because yeah. industrial hardcore was much more a thing but then that was really the the time when up campo came and there was the, this big fight in the industrial areas with with up tempo and industrial in one area you couldn't play mm. shit like this <laughs> no. no no because everybody was like <laughs> this is yeah not, yeah like fast yeah. and and I'm really happy yeah. that people appreciate it now. Like, oh, this track is cool. And sometimes like, it's crazy yay. how things come back around as well because yeah. people will, even just from listening to this now, they'll they'll dig back and pick that up and it will appear in more podcasts and stuff online. Yeah. So uh, shout to Ash Kilborn who jumped in. Hey there. Hey, hey you doing? Ash. Nice to see Good you. Thank you. doing well. Apparently nice. coming on the show in the future. That would be interesting, wouldn't it? Ooh, that would be nice. Mm, that would be nice. Um, okay, so 2013, just been signed to Enzyme Records, First Contact. You had a, a few releases around that time that were quite prolific. And there's another one here that I'd like to play, What Really Matters. So I'm just going to jump straight into it. Mm. Um, nice. Let's go. <laughs>
Really beautiful again, Marlon. Amazing. Thank you. Big, uh, big comrade vibes there as well. Kind of like that Fidian kind of style switch ups and stuff like that. It's fantastic. Mm-hmm. But, but your take on it, you know what I mean? I really, yeah, loved it. Awesome. Yeah, it's really filled with emotion and stuff. There was exactly the time when Patrick and I broke up. We were in the process, so that we made this track. So I put everything in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can really feel that. That's awesome. <laughs> So you say that you broke up. I'd, I'd like to ask a question because it's not clear for me. What w- were you guys in a relationship as well as the music, or was it just a music thing? I, no, I we also don't know. were. Yeah, we also were in a relationship. Yeah, for okay. thirteen years. Yeah. Right. Okay. I didn't know that. So not that it's super important, but I was just just curious. That's all. So when you guys were working on music together, what was the dynamic? Did you each have your own particular strengths and weaknesses that you were focusing on? What would you do in a track that he wasn't so good at, etc.? cetera? Uh, I think I was always the creative mind. So I always made like weird shit, like listen to this. And he was like, how do we make this into hardcore? <laughs> so I think that sure. was our dynamic. I was always being creative and and looking up the edges of b- what we could do, and he was more like the business vibe. Like so, okay, this needs to become a tune. So how do we structure this? Stop running away with all the ideas, Marlin. <laughs> yeah, get back in the box. <laughs> okay. Yes, yes, yes. Behave. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, awesome. A shout but to it's really Steph. a good dynamic, yeah. Yeah, no, no. Yeah, you have to kind of balance sometimes. Shout out to Steph Fracture Four, who's joined the chat. Hey, buddy, I'm going to play hey. one of your tracks later oh, on. Steph. Your new album is fantastic, man. Yeah, fantastic. great, great job on the new album, man. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we'll play something and we'll talk about on that in a bit. But yeah, it's nice to see you in the chat, bro. Uh, also, Nano Storm is in the chat. Bite Mechanism has turned up as well. Osir is Psycho. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the stream. Feel free to share it if you want. Okay. So we're at kind of 2014. This is the end of Lunatic Miss Hysteria, pretty much. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and then you you had some solo releases that came out and there's one in particular here that everybody was calling out in the chat before so we have to play it um it's nictophilia which apparently means somebody who enjoys being in the dark is Mm -hmm. that right yeah that's so right okay shout to luke good and with the factoids right (laughs) here it is let's go
Awesome. Really awesome. I think really it was lovely. cut for the second drop. Uh, Jay did the the cuts, so kill him if if you're upset about that. <laughs> <laughs> somebody, uh, somebody in the chat was going straight to the second kick. Yeah. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I bet you all you... Rec- recognize the vocals from Bjork, right? That's beautiful. Really yeah, good. I sampled yeah, I... Wanderlust in this track. Yeah. It, um, Kim Chiotto says, if I made a set, this would be my final track. Yeah, it's a, a banger, absolute banger. So around that era, you had that, and then I think you had about, I, I can't remember exactly, but like six other solo releases, something like that, between then and, well, and then, then you, you decided to kind of retire the name eventually. Yeah, uh, but let's before we get to that, let's talk about the start of Lucifer because there's an overlap there of Lucifer mm-hmm. started and Miss Hysteria kind of. I don't know. You, you tell me what? Why Lucifer? What? What? Ha, what happened with you? What? What was happening in in your world then? Well, back in the days, it was 2007, I believe. Uh, I was playing with Patrick as a duo, Lunatic and Mysteria, and I really felt the need to do something for myself, something creative, something just for fun. And I was really uh, triggered by this prospect thing. I had been to a prospect party and I really dig the atmosphere and the music. And I was like, yeah, this drum and bass, I really love it. And yeah, if I want to do something for myself, some uh, like a solo set, I would like to do drum and bass just really spontaneous and yeah really into intuitive like i like this i want to do this so i talked to some friends and i got my first gig and i was like <laughs> so nervous because i had never ever been to a drum and bass party before before my first gig so it was really exciting but i love the vibe so much drum and bass have has a very specific energy mm-hmm. It was really attracted me and it really felt good to have, have uh, something for myself. So, yeah, I started Lucifer just for fun, just like a hobby project. And years later, I decided to produce some Dharma Base and made some serious business out of it. But, yeah, at first it was just yeah, a funny thing to do, a hobby. Mm. And then it got, it got more serious, though, because you mm-hmm. actually got signed by Prospect. Yeah. It was a uh, 2014, if I remember, my spreadsheet is here. Yeah. So w- was it like, were you seeing this as a way to escape hardcore then eventually? Was this kind of, were you falling out of love with hardcore at some at some point? Or was it was it a side project that was at the same time? What was happening in your head? Well, you could be pretty on point there. Maybe yeah. I was escaping the things I missed at hardcore and looking for it in another scene. And it was drum and bass. Because I always looking for the, the musical connection with the crew and with the colleagues. And, and um, yeah, you might be really on point. I was missing something and looking for something. And I found it in drum and bass. Mm-hmm. And a mutual a friend hooked me up with Gareth. And uh, he's, Gareth sent me a message back then. We didn't know each other. And he was like, yeah, well, why not play together at Prospect and close the area? I was like, yeah, let's do it. Oh, wow. <laughs> I believe it was in 2009. No pressure. <laughs> no pressure. I was like, oh, what? <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> but yeah. But it, yeah, yeah. But. Yeah, see what happened. It all went downhill from there. <laughs> <laughs> Normally does. But everybody meets Gareth and everything if, if, just yeah, goes if, wrong. If Gareth's involved in it, it's, it's only going one way, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. yeah, but it, it was really different. It, coming into Prospect felt like coming into a family. And yeah. it was all about the music and the passion. And that was something that I was missing in hardcore back then. Yeah, yeah. I think a lot of people find that in Prospect, don't they? It's the... You know, the, the kind of get a, re- a really nice sense of family. And not only that, it's just Gareth surrounds himself by people that are just really passionate and really love music. And that's, they're not, the, the, you know, no one's with Prospect for the money. 
No. Do you know what I mean? No. It's, it's, and, you know, I don't mean that in a negative way. I just mean, you know, that their first and foremost driver is is the money and the people. You know what yes. I mean? It's, um, it's the, you know, that's what kind of you mean, drives the music you to do and the that people. Sort of stuff. It's just that. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Because, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> because back in the days when I started playing, there weren't uh, that much many female DJs. There was Lady Dana and just a few. And yeah, mm-hmm. of course. Of course. And yeah. Later, later. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. But I was asked to do commercial projects, but I'm so happy that it didn't work out anyway. When because you say, that is wh- not what I'm looking for into music. Mm. Okay. Okay. What What do you mean by commercial projects? It was all starting back then, you know. Now you got social media. You got so many female DJs. You got so many projects. Successful. Oh, you mean to be projects. like the yeah, next yeah, big yeah. hype project? Yeah, the that's next got big a thing. Big yeah, PR yeah, going backing on. and ghosting yeah. and all that shit. Okay, right. And but when I was starting, I was just a kid, but I had to choose what what I'm going to do because, of course, mm-hmm. there were like men who were asking if, yeah, do you want to be big and famous and we can help you out and but you have to do this and you have to do that and i was really struggling like yeah that's not what i'm playing to do but okay of course i want to play but um but it never worked out and i'm really happy for it because that mm. that's was not what i'm aiming at in mm. music yeah, i think no i think there's a whole topic there actually to discuss about women in music or females in music and not necessarily just in hardcore. I think, I think that it's such a shame sometimes that the way that things have turned out and the way that this snake is biting its tail in that there's, we've been in a a male dominated environment for quite a long Mm -hmm. time in music. And there's been a large push in recent years, let's say last 10 years for more female artists, which is absolutely correct, right? I'm I'm not saying that that's a bad thing, but then the, uh, the greed side of it and the capitalism side of it spoils it for the women who are actually talented, making music, doing their own thing, because there's, on the extreme end of it, there's people being manufactured and then the people who are actually genuinely talented and creative, automatically it's assumed that they're not because everybody's exposed to these these ones that are fake. And it must be so difficult as a female artist that's like a legit artist always being judged by this preconception that, oh, yeah. you're a girl. You, this, so you, you? Be, who's making your music? Yeah, like, absolutely. And like, it's 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 fucked itself. It, the idea the idea has fucked itself in yeah. many ways. It's so ba- annoying to see. Back in the days, everybody was convinced that Patrick was doing all the work in the studio. And when yeah. we arrived with the two of us at the party, they were like, uh, "You're the DJ, and you're with." I'm like, "I'm the DJ too." But wow. hello, yeah, yeah that's yeah. pure sexism. Wow. But yeah. I kind of got everywhere. used to it, but it's not okay. It's not, it's, yeah, it's not okay. No, at it's all. not okay. Yeah. Has it ever led to any situate like conflictual situations where you've had to go look like you're wrong or anything like? There's any any circumstances that you? Oh yeah, had? a lot, a lot. A few years yeah. ago, I was with a few friends at a festival in the backstage, and I was making a selfie with two female friends so we were looking like a pair of groupies apparently so the backstage manager approached us and he was like you girls don't belong here who are you with <laughs> and i was like who are you with, are you with? Oh my God. i'm with my i was with lisette and Alyssa, <laughs> and we were like what <laughs> but things wow. like these they they look innocent but they are not they're pure Nuts. sexism like yeah. three girls that can't belong here they are with like insert yeah. any male yeah name yeah but things fuck like those that people, happen man. all the time yeah yeah, fuck yeah. That. it's it like i said it's just frustrating that there's this there's this push and the the snake actually bit its own tail in many ways that that that's what gets me it's really really yeah. annoying it must be but annoying and, yeah yeah it's Christina, difficult yeah yeah Sorry. christina was on saying the same thing that you know it's just preconception you just everybody just assumes so everybody assumes everything it's a man's world it's really a difficult matter 
And mm. is it true emancipation uh, when a couple of men decide that I need to get more women on the lineup because that makes them mm -hmm. look good? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mm. No, right? There should be more women in those positions, like promoters, decision makers. Yeah, 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 yeah. I yeah. yeah, that would be great. Yeah, mm. and female artists are a part of this too. But right? that, that's, that, that's, that's the point. It's that the people, they should be there because they deserve to be there. But not just for numbers. There's there's two two sides of it. It shouldn't just be forced because then you end up with this situation where there's people that shouldn't be there. And that's the, that's the whole destructive thing of it. It's, it's a delicate balance, I guess. Yeah, it's a balance. Yeah. 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 And I think when you, uh, as a female artist, you only use your looks to promote yourself on social media to build your career. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh then you're dependent on men to book you and you rely on men to ghost produce you and then you're part of the problem mm. if you you know and mm -hmm. of course you can be a nice girl and have pretty pictures on instagram no problem but you have to have to offer something next to it mm -hmm. and otherwise you keep the system intact and yeah. we depend on men to book us we depend on men to sell the tickets because sex sales to whom mm. Yeah, it's a pretty delicate yeah. discussion. Shout to some of the some of the good and powerful women in hardcore though. Uh you've got uh Christelle, um, who from uh third movement, used to be third movement concrete agency, now working at Most Wanted. You have Debo from um French scene, you have Celine from Carnage, uh Cam working in Oblivion. You know, there's a lot of influential women behind the scenes that people don't realize so shout yeah. to those people the numbers are still got... drastically oh, skewed I've... though it's you yeah know, it's yeah but i'm just for every, I'm just... For every woman but... sure but i'm just you know giving yeah, 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 no, it it's, it's legit it's legit all right well enough of that p political mumbo jumbo let's <laughs> play a little bit more music so we're talking about lucifer um let's play some lucifer and sinister souls genocide Ooh, nice I can find Ooh. it mm -mm. if i can find it here we go let's go responsible for three billion deaths.
Nice. Jay is at nearly getting lynched in the chat. Have you seen? <laughs> Jay made a typo in the oh. chat. He was when we were talking about females in music, yeah. and he wrote something. He, he he wrote that women should be judged because of their looks, and he meant to he meant to write shouldn't, and the whole chat just jumped on him. Oh no, Jay. <laughs> Check your words, bro. <laughs> At least you made the, the bot work anyway. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, lovely track with Fred yeah, there. Beautiful. Fred Sinister Souls. Hey, Fred. Hope you're well. I assume it was with Fred and not Adrian. I think yeah, they both. Were yeah, both. Both. Oh, they were still yeah. together at that point. Yeah. They, still, they yeah. used to be a thang, right? <laughs> oh. By the way, by the way, how English am I right now? Wow. Packet yeah. of Walkers and, and a can of Magnus Cider. Oi oi. Oi oi. Imported. Oi oi. <laughs> um, so mentees just said Fred on Oblivion show when. That's a good one, actually. We yeah. Get Fred on. Yeah. Good one. Uh, all right. Next, in a similar kind of era, this is one of my favorite tracks of yours, and I'm just going to go straight into it. Lucifer Desolation. Really good Ooh. track. Let's go. June. His number.
Mm-hmm. Awesome track. I hammered that one when it came out. Absolutely hammered it because it was a time, it came at a time where I think a lot of the crossbreedy kind of stuff had started to become a bit stale and there was only certain tracks that really stuck out. Um, there was some of the Gantra and Ruin stuff that started to come out, which was in a very similar kind of vein as this. And there was this. And uh, yeah, it was a nice, pleasant surprise. So thank you. Yeah. I really enjoyed Lovely it. Lovely production on that. that was yeah. Really, thank you. really nice. Yeah. Thanks. Really warm, kick, nice moving kick tail and stuff. Lovely. Yep. Since since really nice. I mean, it's a, it's a nice one for like up and coming producers to listen to. How- oh. <laughs> Oh, he's freezing. <laughs> I'll sort of get a really nice balanced mix. Get the, get the goes. Uh, Greg, you need to go again. It's kind of really, it's really nice. Greg? Oh, he's freezing again. Really, really oh. nice. Greg, oh. we're, we're losing you, buddy. Oh, right. I'm here. I'm still here. Back. Yeah. Go again, mate. Say again, please. No, I just, I just said it was a, it's a really good example of how to kind of make a really nice, well-balanced mix and stuff. Still sounds punchy and powerful. Um, yeah, and the the synths it really kind of stick out proud in the track the mids and so the tops are really really nice. Yeah, yeah. it's, it's a, a really well nice balanced powerful mix. Great stuff, Alan. Thanks. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> um, yeah, people in the chat loving it. The people were actually calling out for that earlier on. Um, Someone said, how does cement in tea taste? Yeah. No clue. <laughs> and everyone loves that name. Uh, oh, you're on the red wine now, Marlon. What you've, I know what have how you red wine tastes, yeah. It's like what Fantini. It Fantini. was in the bonus. Nice. So. Nice. Uh, yes, it's Lars, pretty nice. Lars says, great performance for Ground Zero stream. Uh, great Ground Zero and at the Prospect stream. Uh, Robert, was. yeah, was good <laughs> from what I remember. Robert's arrived in the chat. Hey, Robert, I didn't hey, see you sneak in there. Hey, buddy, you okay? Hope your Butterfist, games are going well. Butterfist is, says it's better than semen. <laughs> in your tea? It, what it depends. Uh, cement. <laughs> Yeah, oh. I've never tried cement in my tea, and I've never had semen in my tea. So, <laughs> oh, well, well, Mr. Butterfist seems to know. <laughs> yeah, Butterfist is a pro. Yeah, we don't need to try it because he has. Mm. <laughs> yeah, it's like creamy he is, tea. He is the Indeed. Butterfist. <laughs> um, okay, so I guess we've got one more track to play in the this kind of Lucifer area. Um. 2019 so more more recent um and this one is with our friend noel hidden connected cool
awesome. Really nice. And even even got Noel out of the shadows to come and say hello. He oh. came into the chat to say, hey, hey, man. Hope you're Is good, he bro. Here? Oh, yeah, cool. he came into the chat. He, he's always lurking in the background, but he, uh, he pops up occasionally and says hi. <laughs> so uh, Cool. Yeah. Hey, Noel. Yeah. Yeah, another amazing track. And with working with somebody like Noel as well, it's obviously always a pleasure. I, I assume. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, wicked. Wicked. And I, 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 sorry, go ahead. Oh, you've seen the series uh, Dark on Netflix? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we sampled it. Okay. Gotcha. Well, what the fuck's going on in the chat, by the way? Why is everybody talking about foreskin jacket? Like foreskin. Somebody, somebody said foreskin jacket, and now everybody's talking about a foreskin jacket. What what the hell's going on? I have no anyway, idea. Anyway, whatever. We could talk about foreskins anyway. Foreskin is do a you, jacket you, in its own way. It, it's it's a jacket in its own way. Unless, yeah. unless you're talking about a jacket made of foreskins, which would be impressive. Like a Lady Gaga meets jacket. Whoa, but then the foreskins. <laughs> yeah, right. With, yeah. What kind of foreskins would you need? How many would How you many need? How many would you need? Depends how big you are. Needs. Depends who has to wear the jacket. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I guess so, yeah. Right. Ooh. We need to find out. Anyway. <laughs> It's a rabbit hole I don't want to go down right now. <laughs> oh, funny. Right. Uh, um, one second. It's okay. Okay, so we kind of got, got to this point now where you're doing your Lucy Fur thing. You're having a great time. Mm -hmm. Uh what, what, are you, what are you laughing at, Greg? <laughs> Noel just came on and said, it was a great show until you guys started talking about foreskins. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen I'm that. Paraphrasing. I'm paraphrasing. Oh, okay. I, I can't anyway. see that. Anyway, uh, very tired from working. D-Limit tunes today. Just watching and listening. Great show. And then they start to, all right, yeah, sorry. Let's 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 get back to the professional stuff. <laughs> so you're, you're doing this, this drum and bass thing. You're obviously having a great time with it. And... You're kind of falling out of love completely now with the Miss Hysteria thing. And yeah. you decide enough. What yeah. was the what was the the thought process behind that? What why? Well, it took a couple of years, actually. And mm -hmm. yeah, it was a really tough period between 2014, 15, 16, maybe. Mm -hmm. When hardcore the hardcore scene was changing. I was changing and I didn't felt at home anymore. And I had some really bad gigs and um, especially the, the, <laughs> the all female lineups. And so that was actually part of it then what we talked yes. about before. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That was actually part of it. Yeah. 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 Right. Because they book you because you're a female because of tits. Yeah. But then you got mm. booked in the area and then you arrive at the party and you, uh, see the atmosphere and you hear the music and you're like okay i'm gonna destroy this in three two one totally not feeling at home and feeling on the right place and a tempo was making his entrance and there was a lot of uh, struggling in the industrial areas there were a lot of up tempo djs there was a lot of industrial djs and they were mixed together and it was not working anymore and i really felt trapped I really mm. felt trapped. I had so many gigs where I was like, yeah, it's really nice. You're paying me to do this, but you can pay me as much of, as you want. But this is not what makes me happy, right? Mm. This is not what I want to do because nobody here is actually wanting to hear what I want to bring. Yeah. And that was the main thing for me that made me think like, what am I doing? Well, yeah, we get into this in the first place because we love it, right? And if that, well, certainly for me, if the 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 burning desire to do it and the enjoyment wasn't there, then I wouldn't really give a fuck about it. As soon as that's gone, then yeah, if that's everything, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And I yeah. was playing on on stages when, uh, at four a.m. after an up tempo DJ. At I can't remember when it was, but it was in Italy, and I was like. <laughs> Yeah, fuck. Yeah. And then an, an hour is long, is long. 
yeah. 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 When yeah, you don't yeah, want to yeah. do it, it's long. Yeah, yeah. When you don't want to do it. <laughs> and and sometimes I was like, okay, let's get creative. And I play some more up tempo and I play a bit more mainstream so that I can get the crowd and stuff. But my mind isn't like that. I can do it. I yep. can do it. That's not that's not you. It's not who it's not that's what not what makes me. you happy, right? Yeah. No. So yeah. yeah, I was really struggling back then. And I was thinking, for, yeah, maybe I have to quit. Maybe it's it's finished. Maybe it's not for me anymore. And yeah, I didn't feel at home at my label. I didn't feel at home at my scene anymore. But it really was a process of like one or two years to decide I have to let go of everything. I have to let go of my name. Miss Hysteria is really focusing on the female aspect. I really had to let go of that. I um, thought of that name when I was 17. You know, I'm a grown up adult mm-hmm. now. I don't feel uh, anything with the name anymore. I have to let go of the past and start over again. And so I did with the help of my friends and the support of my friends and the support of Prospect and all my colleagues, because that was a really difficult step to take. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That must have been really scary as well. That kind of will people accept me in my as my new, you know, in my new role as with you know doing this music I want. Will I still be accepted? And you know, yeah, exactly. am I doing am I doing the right thing leaving this thing that's been really successful and has got me this far? Am I doing the right thing leaving it behind? It's, yeah, it's, it's I I step. was always Miss Hysteria and doing this, and mm. then I had to leave it. That was really scary. Yeah, but yeah, it wasn't making me happy anymore. So I had to do something. Yeah. I was creating music, and then I released a, a record, and I was like silence and echoing in the distance, and mm. no feedback. And I was like, yeah, this isn't what I want to do. So mm. yeah, I was really struggling. But I'm just reading the the press release that got dropped. It's it's actually the one that's on Discogs, but I remember. Gareth putting this out on Prospect when he announced the Adamant Scream thing, and you did as well. And it's, uh, I'll read it actually. Adamant Scream has been active for quite some time now with different projects and aliases. Every genre knows ups and downs and lives by certain borders and rules. This project makes the borders blur and goes in between various styles. Let's make whatever the fuck I want, whenever I want. It's quite poignant. Yes. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Yeah. That's it. That's it. Yeah. And, and I and remember the, the, putting out this first demo with tracks I couldn't play earlier as Miss Hysteria because it would never fit. Yeah. And mm-hmm. and the crowd would never accept it. And I, I played it as my demo as Adam and Scream. And everybody was like, whoa, this is amazing. What is this? I'm like, yeah, these are all like old tracks I could never ever play. And now they work. Yeah. 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 Awesome. And even the name Adamant Scream, it's so such a powerful name, like and it it does it it's exactly what it says on the box. You're like screaming, No, I will not do I will not be that's it's you just nailed it in one, like it is it's fucking great, honestly. Um Thanks. I've yeah. had sleepless nights on the name, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you nailed it, mate. Yeah, That's a terrible. really good name. Uh, shout out to Rosie in the chat Thank you. and Amanda in the chat. Uh, Australian crew have set their alarms to get up just to see your interview. Big up, girls. I hope you're doing well. Wow. Awesome. Oh, thank you. Thank All you. Right. Let's get into some adamant scream then because we've just killed Miss Hysteria. She's dead. No more mm-hmm. titties, <laughs> just just core. Cool. No yeah. more titties. <laughs> yeah, actually, that's really funny to name it. I've played at areas. They they had had this all female lineup and they had this area and it was like the fluffer bunny area. Oh, you know what a fluffer f- bunny is? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Wow. I was like, "What the fuck?" And I played it. Was another party. It was like the the the, pre, the hot girls. Uh, uh, beach party area and I was like what no that wasn't working for me but Fluffer Bunnies yeah. was really the worst wow. that's a step too far right <laughs> wow. yeah that's a step yeah. too far what the fuck mm. alright well Just this one's kind of, kind of topical because you're drinking red wine let's oh, play June. red coloured juice 
by Adam and Scream, 2019. Exceptions are the relatively uncommon ginger varieties, which produce a red colored juice. Such industrial, That's many a kick. That is a <laughs> absolute belter, isn't it? face melter, mate. Uh, yeah. Gee, jeez. But it's so funny. I I found out these lyrics on. I copied some text from Wikipedia about red wine, like it's mm. red colored juice, blah blah blah. And I put it in Google Translate and I sampled it. <laughs> <laughs> really? Wow, That's awesome. where the samples wow. from. Yeah. Nice. Wow. It's greenish white. Perp, perp, perp. I was like, yeah. <laughs> awesome. This is the shit. <laughs> so good. Uh, uh, right. Jay saying in the tra- in the chat, is this track about ketchup? <laughs> no, yeah, bro. I know. No, it's about ketchup. Yeah, I think he's trying to win back some of his uh, yeah, yeah, burying he's himself doing Anthony points. Can, yeah. he's, <laughs> he's trying to get back in favour for being a cunt earlier on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, brilliant. All right, so Adam and Scream is tearing up the industrial scene all of a sudden. Smash 
in there straight in i remember seeing the first artwork actually i want to, i'm going to show this because this artwork was really superb um yeah but mike ripman yeah that's the one uh zoom uh zoom out on this Oop. do this uh this one right was it on this one this no, it was the this second yeah this one Yes, this was the first one. Yeah. With the heart and the star in balance. Yeah. And that's quite, that speaks to what we were talking about before, mm -hmm. right? You followed your Absolutely. heart, not the stars. Yes. Yeah. Awesome. This was a real statue he, made, he created for the Mike's, so oh, easy, man, Mike's so a amazing. genius. He's yeah, so talented and such a nice guy as well. We got to yeah. hang with him quite a lot at Boomtown and it was just an absolute pleasure. Like yeah. it's just a nice person to be around and he's like so humble and he, he's ridiculously talented and like it just, yeah, yeah. just carries himself so well with it. It's lovely. Yeah. Yeah, yeah he's amazing. Yeah. And the Big second EP... Yeah, I, I uh, had a long talk with him on the phone about what are the tracks about, what are the emotions behind it, and he came up with the idea of the mirror and the blood. And that's yeah, another that amazing, one. yeah, really good artwork. Yeah, love it. It was quite an angry EP, so yeah, it fitted. Yeah, 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 yeah. has a really nice kind of like uh, almost like eighties horror movie video coverage you know what i mean like movie cover yeah yeah yeah, yeah. kind of vibe to it as well with the shad mirror yeah i love it cool let's play a track from it we've got um adamant scream and thrasher disorder oh. nice from this breaks my fucking heart ep let's go
super nice, super crunchy. Got uh, Robert in the chat, obviously still high on his pre-workout, saying he's just punching air, sat in his chair. <laughs> Go on, Robert, give him hell. <laughs> uh, everyone seems to be quiet. Are you muted? Yes. Very. Yes, okay. Yeah. Good. I'm mute. Yeah. Uh, another banger. Mm. It feels like you're really finding your groove with this stuff. And you, all of the stuff that you've learned over the years, you're now able to just chuck them in and you've got the right audience for it that you're happy with and no holding back. Hello? What's coming up? <laughs> Can, am I audible? No, we can't hear you at all, Joe. Really? <laughs> <laughs> now we hear you. <laughs> what the yeah, fuck? You, are you trolling me? What yeah, the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, all right. Uh, Marlin's opening up a bottle of wine. Okay. Yeah. It's like cheers. that. Cheers. Yeah, cheers. cheers. Um, Nighting Crimes is like my favorite. Oh, um, oh this is the one? one that you scan yeah. it with the thing and it talks to you, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Right. Uh, there's only 62 likes on the stream by the way, everybody. So if that gets to 100, we'll do shots. I'll so do a 0% alcohol shot. I'll, I'll do a real shot. I'll do uh, a real wine shot. Yeah, yeah wine why, shots. Why not? Yeah, yeah why, wine, not? Wine, why not? Why not? <laughs> I will do a cheese shot. Cheese shots? <laughs> cheese I'm down, shot, that I'm could be a new I'm down thing. With a cheese shot. <laughs> We have to. We don't. Yeah, let's snort some cheese strings or something. Let's see what happens. Uh, uh, it's not Gareth. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. We need to get Gareth we know, back we know what happens when Gareth, yeah, yeah, when Gareth snorts food. We know what happens. Oh fucking no. uh, We're not getting to one hundred. Let's just do them. I think we can get to 100, 100 likes. We can do it. We can do it, gang. We can do it. All right. I'm going to go back to the, the timeline and the music. Uh, ba, 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 one second. Um, so we're kind of at current day, actually. We're up to, up to speed. There's one track that I've got here that we haven't played yet. And given the fact that the person that you made it with is actually there on the webcam next to you, we should mm -mm. play it. So mm -mm. Adamant Scream. And dolphin. Dolphin. Oi. Flesh nice. and bone. Last one. Bum bum. Bum bum. The flesh covers the bone. There's no chance at all. We're all trapped.
There's no chance at all. We're all trapped. is sneaky it just <laughs> creeps up on you everyone needs a 303 right yeah jay trusted in the chat said why is 303 just literally the best sound in the world Me, <laughs> i went I, I went to the main i went to the sauna at the day after ground zero yeah let's not talk about what oh god and anyway, <laughs> anyway don't tell that story tell the no, other story <laughs> <laughs> so, so you can choose a locker. We were like, there was lock, locker number naught to 100. And like, I had to run past all the lockers to go to the very end one to find locker number 303. Because I thought in the state that I'm in after ground zero, it's probably the only number that I'll be able to remember when I come back out of the sauna. So <laughs> locker number 303 it was. 303? Yeah. Awesome. Anyway, random story. So Marley, anyway. we're, up to, we're up to current day. Yeah. What a ride. Uh, what's next? What's next? Well, in November, my next EP is scheduled. EP or album. That, album? Yeah, maybe. Ooh. Ooh. No, uh, in in uh, Corona lockdown, I was pretty stuck and it didn't make uh, that much music, but now I do. And I've got a lot of tunes waiting uh hardcore drum and bass and um so it's a big surprise in november what will it be will it be an ep will it be an album <laughs> okay keeping yeah. that one keeping that one uh, locked down for a bit yeah we'll find out soon awesome exciting wicked well thank you for coming on and being an amazing guest and telling us your story uh really really appreciate it especially going into all the details the the juicy details like about relationships and being a female in the scene and all this kind of stuff it, it's important stuff for people to know i feel anyway and and it's i like to think of this podcast as a a time capsule for people to come back to later and reference who people are and things like that so thank you very much for letting us inside uh really appreciate it um, one one last question: Is there anything else coming from Lucifer, or is everything going to be Adam and Scream now? No, no, no. The EP coming in November will be Adam and Scream versus Lucifer. Oh, so, yes, yeah. Okay, so they both coexist indefinitely. Absolutely. Then for now. Yeah, awesome. more and more. More and more. Yeah. Amazing. That's good to hear. Good to hear. All right. Well, that was the end of the adamant scream section our next section is the what's hot what's hot so what is hot that's the question what is what hot, is hot? Oh. who's hot <laughs> my uh, hot stuff actually crimes wine is hot i hope not you it is <laughs> like lock, 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 lock. It <laughs> you're doing it wrong yeah <laughs> Uh, Saying that, Christmas is coming and we get the 
like mulled wine, mulled cider, like nice. Oh, that's that's yeah. kind of nice. Mm. The hot wine, yeah. 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 Uh, by the way, before we go into what's hot, I'm going to just hit you with a bunch of uh, more propaganda. <laughs> blue wine, yeah. I like prop blue, I wine. Like blue wine. Okay, so uh, for people in the chat who have seen all of the different emojis and the different color names in the chat, so you're aware, we do actually have a membership plan that's associated to our channel. So for a, a small subscription fee per month you can help this channel develop help us buy equipment to send to guests and buy equipment to improve the channel invest in different technologies to make this stream smoother higher definition and also to encourage other content creators to come to the channel uh that comes in three different uh levels if you like the first level is 199 per month uh, that gives you loyalty badges next to your name. It gives you all of the emojis in the chat, but it also gives you some benefits. So you get, for the first level, you get a 5% disc discount at oblivionunderground.com indefinitely. So whenever you buy merch, you get a 5% discount. You get shout outs. We can see your name easier. So it's easier to, um, easier to see you in the chat uh, and you get um, discord member rank so you can see exclusive areas membership only areas in our discord level two uh someone's put trim packages don't know what that means um uh level two is 2.99 per month and you get all of the stuff that i said before but you then you get all of the oblivion digital releases when they come out so if you're already a fan of oblivion then you automatically get the uh the releases that you would pay for anyway so it's kind of an investment anyway um you get priority notification for our merchandise drops so you get access to those first before they sell out and you get members only live chats sometimes after the show we'll go and do a members only stream within our discord you can get access to that Level three, this is for more ho most hardcore of our followers. You get vouchers, uh, Oblivion Underground and Hardcore Beer. For those who are tier three, you're going to get a five, pa five pound discount for uh, the next Oblivion event coming through to you shortly. Early access, um, you get added to the Oblivion promo list. So what that means is when we send our music to DJs, you get it at the same time. So you get it ahead of the rest of the world to play in your sets wherever you want, etc. Entry into competitions, members only videos, and priority reply to comments. Of course, you can enjoy our channel without all of this. You don't have to get this. You can just come in for free and do what you want. But if you want to support us and what we do, then awesome. We would really appreciate that. Thanks very much. Um, we've also got, I talked a lot about Discord there. We have our own Discord channel. If you don't know what Discord is, it's like a chat. Uh, chat application it's a bit like skype and uh microsoft messenger uh, irc uh for old school forums all mixed into one so we've got this whole community in here with voice channels text channels members only areas community discussions about the show specifically um we've got zones for uh, production sharing samples production tips djing tips gaming if you game meeting people to go and play games with tips for graphic design uh video design tips for streaming if you want anything you want to ask me anything i can answer it in there and then link sharing for your own stuff your own sets your own streams movies and series that you've watched you know just it's just a community that's not facebook not insta it's away from all of that bullshit and we've got like uh oh lars has just become a member respect man there's like a hundred people in there and uh yeah it's just it's just something different than the usual day-to-day -day bullshit. So uh, if you want to join us and support us, then great. That would be awesome. Get involved. But if you don't, then that's also cool. Just enjoy the show and do you, man. Um, all right. Da -da -da -da. Fracture 4, what is Hardcore Beer? What sounds like my thing? Hardcore Beer is actually the sponsor of the show. Um, Steph, who asked in the chat, 
uh, hardcorebeer.nl um, if you go over there and use uh, hashtag, uh, sorry, co- the code Oblivion Show when you check out, you get a discount. Um, it's actually, yeah, they do our beer. They do the Prospect beer. This is the Oblivion Show beer. Do-do-do. There is a Prospect beer. There's been some various different Oblivion beers. Uh, and it's awesome craft beer. So, yeah, go and check it out, man. Yep, 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 yep. Steph, inbox me, bro. Inbox me. I'll tell you everything you need to know. Trust me. Um, okay, that's the end of my pro- second round of propaganda. I'm sorry for dumping it on you, but needs must. Let's go on to what's hot. What's hot? So, what's hot? I ask you. Tell well, us, I Joe, tell you tell what. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what's hot. Christina Somniac One's just launched her new label called Somniverse, and this is one of the tracks off it. Let's go. You know, they're trying to control our minds. Yeah, Christina. Oh, <laughs> we've lost to Marlin. Well, um, oh. <laughs> overdosed on cheese, yeah, and <laughs> cheese and red wine. Yeah. Uh, so this is from Christina Somniac One, our friend's new record label, Somniverse. Um, yeah, the uh, record is lovely red color. I love that, and the design is nice. Uh, Christina fooling around like normal. And this is available on... Da, 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 where do we get it? Where's the link? Come on. Show us the link. 
Where do we get this from? Come on, Christina, where's your links at, mate? Must be here. Here we go, Bandcamp. There's the Bandcamp link, everybody. Phew. Right, it's in the chat there. Go and support Christina. She deserves it. She's fucking awesome. Great release. I think yep. that's the digital there. Really cool and, track. Yeah. And you can get it from Triple Vision here. Oh, shit. That's not right. That's not the right link either. What's happening, Greg? Thanks, Joe. Right. Pressing too many buttons at once. I am pressing too many fucking buttons. Here we go. Here's the link. Here we go, chat. Right. That's the record and the digital. Go and support Christina. Fucking awesome. Uh, you were about to say something when I changed the screen, Marlin, but you had cheese in your mouth and you were just kind of doing a finger pointy thing. Did, did, you, want, did you want something to say? <laughs> no, it, I was just partying. Oh, okay. With, with, with cheese in my mouth. Like, okay, perfect. Because you, okay. you're that kind of girl. <laughs> yeah, that kind yeah. of girl. Right. Um, um, right, next up, let's get this rocking. This one, this was Steph. I know you're in the chat. This was a really difficult track to pick from your album. They're all fucking great. If we get enough time, I'll play another one. But this is from the new Fracture 4 album, which has just come out on Junosha. Fracture 4, She Walks in Beauty Like the Night. Enjoy. <laughs> Whose love is innocent. 
Really beautiful stuff. Welcome back, Steph. I'm glad you were recovered after that horrible studio situation and then getting hacked. That must have been brutal. Um, yep. Lovely this... stuff. Fantastic album. Great job. Yeah. Really, really good. Really cool. Um, let me turn that off, this on. So this is Ratchet 4, in case people didn't fucking know. Um and here's the link to get the release in the chat there's so many good tracks on the album it was really difficult to pick one there's one that's like got doubles and triples in it and all kinds of shit going on it fucking mind-blowing i might play it again I might play it after but yeah go and support this great artists great label to be on as well nothing but love for fracture four one of the old school crew we used to book Steph at oblivion in 2002 man 20 years ago that is yeah wow that flies doesn't it i know right yeah all right let's keep flying through next up we've got a bit of the old uh art corey kind of sound Ooh. promo roughneck tactics Nice classic sounds with a modern uh, twist on it a little bit. So sort of Jay's burying himself in the chat again. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I can hear myself through somebody's something. <laughs> Who's playing me in the background? No, I, I can. Who's Who's playing me through a speaker? I can hear it coming through. Stop that. Oh. Uh, so this is... Yeah. Da, 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 da. Where is it? This is out on third movement. Somebody was asking before. Scrolling through all of this. Blah, 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 blah. Here we go. This is available at the TTM shop. Link in the chat. Three track 
EP. It's on vinyl and digital. Uh, there's tracks by another. Uh, oh, there's no info there. So promo and um, Brian Accardi. I think that is actually promo too. That's one of his alias, right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, it's it's classic kind of promo sound. Jay's saying in the chat, would this fit in a modern day set? Blah blah blah. I think you have to remember, Jay, is that there are actually places that are specifically playing that kind of sound. So yeah, it fits in. Yeah. That's, so I yeah. I actually had a chat with uh, Sebastian about this because we were at um, Ground Zero and I had a bit of a chat about this whole thing and and um, yeah, he wanted to go. He wanted to go right back to that old kind of roughneck style and got all the old analog kit out got all the hardware out to do it and um and yeah just went in and did it did it like we used to do it um nothing but respect for doing that kind of stuff and he's like you know mm. just nailed that vibe again that kind yeah. of really kind of late late 90s kind of just full on gabba kick drums break beats just all the fun stuff right and yeah. it kind of like feels like sometimes you you we kind of lost that a little bit you know that kind of we're trying to make everything so perfect and clean and you know, loud and full, and it's like, yeah, and you can kind of like Jay saying, you know, how does this even fit into a track, into a set? I mean, that in itself is a problem. Do you know what I mean? That if we yeah. made everything now so it's loud and digital and so, yeah, fucking the, raw. The, the, yeah, that no other music fits into it anymore. It's like, yeah, you, we've got to. Uh, maybe we're doing something wrong if that's the case. You know what I mean? And and you know, I've got so much respect for, and I know I'm biased, but people like Lizette who play. You know a lot of the old stuff and new stuff and they kind of work out how to mix them and stay fan and people like that all do this sort of stuff yeah you know really spend the time to work out how to put sets like this together and make them work with kind of you know yeah respecting it's the old difficult to traditional music, old you know. stuff yeah, yeah yeah make it work with new stuff and yeah it's, it's yeah. an art art in itself so yeah but yeah I, I love what promo's done with that stuff so uh yeah, yeah. big respect for for uh, keeping it old school we're going to go from one end of the spectrum and old school sounding stuff all the way up to false idol <laughs> bloodbath in one fell swoop. Let's uh, flip the dynamics.
All right. False Idol, which is the DJ Hidden, in case people don't know. Um, that release is out now. You can get it at Hard Tunes. It's on Afterlife Recordings. Send the link here. Both tracks are pretty cool. Um, well, that one in particular is my favorite. Um, <laughs> it popped up in the chat. It can still be mixed with other stuff. <laughs> 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 brilliant um yeah agreed diedra noel is a magician <laughs> uh robert says uh in the mix what was it he said here noel does not mix the waveform listens to him <laughs> brilliant uh so yeah you can get that now on hard tunes i assume it's well maybe it's not at other places actually because it's uh afterlife so maybe it's just available at hard tunes but yeah Go and enjoy it. Go and stream it. Go and enjoy it. Boom. Amazing stuff. Next up, and almost last, we have got you, Greg. One what? of your tunes. Oh, yes. Nice. Took one of your tunes out from your new VIP thing. This oh, is cool. Dolphin and Lime Wax. No Sympathy. Dolphin VIP. Voice isn't back. I said bangers, Greg. Snares and kicks all over the shop. Indeed, indeed, indeed. 
nailed the remix or the VIP even because the original was released on his album, right? Um, yeah, Maxim. Yeah, Maxim's Lime um, album. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was yeah started off as a kind of half speed thing. We would like it almost. It was going to be some kind of like weird Ivy Lab type thing at like 100 BPM. We were going to do a half speed thing and it kind of was but then maxine put his uh pots and pans double speed amens or whatever it was in and it was like okay let's go and then when i did the vip i just put all the kick drums in as well and then it was yeah house of a thousand kick drums <laughs> it's on this one right oh cool. it's on the yeah 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 but this is what, what did we, we played the waltz the last time didn't we yes we did yeah i think yeah yeah, yeah. Polychronic Con's on there as well, which is quite nice. And what's the other one? Can't remember. Oh, um, Golden Linings VIP as well. Yeah. 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 200 to 1. All right. Yeah. Well, that is the end of What's Hot. But I think I'm going to drop a little Easter egg in here. The people that are still about. Um... Da, 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 da. What am I doing? No idea. Right. So this. So some of you may not may be aware. Some of you may not be aware. But we've got a release coming out from Mr. Butterfist. This is our next release Whoa, on Oblivion. Yeah. Nice yeah. artwork. <laughs> yeah. The, the, the artwork for this release is fucking amazing. <laughs> We had to have that something is absolutely disgusting. <laughs> yeah, well, he's called Butterfist, and the release is called Dirty Digits. So, what 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 are we gonna do? Cam got the remit, and she just yeah. smashed it. So, <laughs> big up Cam, and uh, yeah, I'm gonna play. <laughs> I'm gonna play a little tease from it right now, actually. So, yeah. get ready for one minute of Butterfisting. Let's go. Because I'm a talentless fuck thing. Because I'm a talentless fuck pig. saying butterfist is coming to fucking steal your children mate watch four track ep coming on oblivion um pretty fucking soon actually and um i heard a little rumor that he might be doing the music for a video that's coming up as well so uh yeah oh it's all happening big things are coming guys all right so big, that was the end of what's up work work what's yes hot? that was the end of what's hot um that brings us to the end part of the show and this is where we do a little questions and answers so if anyone's got questions in the chat for any of us um then now's the time go ahead you've got i don't know 10 minutes and then we're gonna call it at midnight so any questions anything you want Marlin's been quiet for a little while, so uh, someone needs to uh, engage her again. <laughs> Fire some questions over. <laughs> yes. Did you finish? Did you finish the second bottle of wine yet, mate? Oh, I still got it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Some of you. Any questions? Anything? Any Have questions? Seen- Sorry, we I've are got, going I've, to sleep. I've got, I've got a. I've got a question. What's What's your favorite cheese? Oh, I like blue cheese. Oh, no. No, no, no. I don't no? like blue cheese. No, no, no. Not for me. Mushrooms, eggs, blue cheese. No, none of that shit. What, what kind though. of cheese you, you like? 
Oh, I mean, I, I like a borza. I don't like kind of a garlicky. I, do, I have a thing for garlic. So, yeah, mm. garlicky cream cheese is good. Port Salut is nice. Port Salut, yeah. Yeah, that's... that's Can I just say, I, I like a lot of different cheeses, but the king of cheeses is cheddar. Extra mature cheddar is the, the ultimate all-rounder cheese. It's just... It's just it. I mean, yeah, you can't can't go wrong with a good cheddar, can you? Can't, especially for toasties and just can't go wrong. Even quesad- I've been making quesad- loads of quesadillas lately, and yeah, I brought four can't kilograms of it back from the UK with me. <laughs> <laughs> Red yeah. uh, right, here's a question in the chat. Um, ba- 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 ba. Deidre, are are you going to still do something with Miss Hysteria? No, the answer is no. Go go back in the stream. Uh, Miss Hysteria has been buried. She's she's gone. Um, any word on the Oblivion party in Australia being rescheduled? Waiting for Chain at the moment. He's re- reworking his stuff. He's just building from the ground up again. So hopefully, yes, it's still booked. I think the flights are still on reserve. So yeah. Um, Marlon, do you think it helps that it helps at the beginning of your career that you are female and the guys want to support you or being your mentor for having a favor? I think we've answered that, right? Yeah, it could well, have helped and it could have been in your uh, in a negative way. Both. Yeah. Yeah. Um, here's one. Here's a, a paid question, actually. Adamant Scream, would you take a time machine to the future or the past and what would you want to do while you're there oh my god that's <laughs> a difficult question so or you not can choose, you can only choose one you can only go to the future or the past yeah, yeah. and can you come back as well or is yeah. it like a one is it a one-way journey somewhere i think if i could go to the past i would do so many things different but then again yeah. I would, i'm buy, like yeah buy more bitcoin <laughs> yeah <laughs> buy more. Start. oh man <laughs> Yeah, but Bitcoin is doing not so well lately. It's on sale. It's on offer. Yeah. I'm, I'm just keep it's buying more. It's on offer. <laughs> Jay, yeah, I, I... Jay, Jay <laughs> said, can I borrow some of your moisturizer? That's not creepy at all, Jay. What the fuck? Yeah, yeah, My moisturizer? Oh, of course. Wow. <laughs> I think he's trying to indirectly say that you still look youthful and beautiful. <laughs> Not Man, I, I crazy moisturize crazy. every day and he never asks me. That's, that's such a sexist <laughs> thing to say. He's ne- never asked me for moisturizer. I moisturize every day. Every oh, day you just it. need to use a lot of collagen. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Jay's, Jay's uh, just asking for trouble, isn't he? Meat he is, with the skin and the bones. Yeah. 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 Um, here we go. Marlin, who do you want to collab with the most? The, the most? That's a difficult question. Um, it, what, it, within the scene or without the scene or, or just com- you know fantasy anybody. collab? If, if I could collab with someone with us, uh, um, I would collab with Tom York. Oh, that'd be that nice. would be my dream. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Oh, that would be really nice. Awesome. Yeah. Um, da, 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 da. Martin Sorry, Garrix, no, sorry, sorry. sorry 909 says, would, is it his, this is a really important question for you, Malin. Mm-hmm. Would you rather have <laughs> lobster claws or small or? wheels for hands? Lobster claws. <laughs> Really? Yes. Yeah. Small wheels. Yeah. No, Why? I can do with lobster claws. Actually, we watched um, Freak Show, Ameri- <laughs> uh, American Horror Story Freak Show, because the guy had lobster claws, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and all the girls used to love him because he had the. Yep. <laughs> I can do it. I think. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, Marlin, what's your favorite current non-hardcore, non-drum and bass track at the moment? <laughs> oh, that's difficult. I have to yeah. look at my all-time favorite spot. Narrowing it down. Yeah, because I, in my f- spare time, I never ever listen to hardcore drum and bass. So I listen to fucking everything from any Lennox to uh, funk to punk. Uh, 70s, 60s. Yep. 
Yep. Same. I, everything. Yeah. Um, yeah, absolutely. I tell you what, I have been listening to recently, though. I'm just getting a link for the chat. This thing that I sent you the other day, Greg. This fucking hip hop group. Oh, Contra Costa. Costa Contra? Yes. Costa Contra? Coast yeah, Contra. Guys. Those guys are dope, man. Yes. Uh, yeah, here yeah, you go, yeah, chat. Really good. Check that shit out. They're really fucking good, man. Go and enjoy that. And I've been, I've also been going down a rabbit hole with that Fred again guy. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. He's really cool. Some he really is really cool good. Stuff. A cool story as well behind it. Completely yeah. not hardcore, like the opposite of hardcore, in fact. But, but you know that boiler room set that, like, yeah, got like three million views in two weeks, and it's an it's, it's an bonkers. amazing set. To be fair. If yeah. you're in, you know, we've kind of even if you're not really into kind of housey stuff, it's it's still a really impressive, really impressive set. What kitchen utensil would you have to replace your hands? A meat tenderizer, all day, mate. Just <laughs> fucking whack. Oh, I'll take a garlic yeah. press. <laughs> a garlic <laughs> press. <laughs> <laughs> not fucking with me mate <laughs> oh shit like two more questions and then we're gonna call it at midnight yeah Walt from Ronin's call uh, is is asking would you call up again with Ophidian but I did actually and we did a Lucifer versus Mjolnir call up oh, and it ooh. will be out in November so that's gonna oh, be on the that's mystery that's project that's- the yeah. EP album thing. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With the burning dolls and stuff. So Awesome. Mm-hmm. You're saying Fred again is amazing. Yes, Robert. Fred again is amazing, bro. Fucking love you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right. One more question. All right. I'm going to, I'm going to do it. Marlin. Yes. What piece of, what piece of advice would you give to, uh, up and coming DJ slash producer. What's one of the, what's the most useful advice that you could think of from the past twenty odd years that you would give? It depends on what you want to do. Eventually, if you want to be famous, if you want to be a big entertainer, then you have to uh, choose a different road. Mm-hmm. If you want to be creative, if you want to want to make music, if you want to. Act use music to express yourself then you have to take another road always be true to yourself and do whatever the fuck you want if you want to be commercial be commercial if you do not want to be commercial please choose the other road always be true to yourself that's my only advice i could give solid absolutely solid yeah okay marlon you've been an amazing guest Yes, it's been wonderful having you on. Thank you so much for, you, for coming guys. on to chat with us and hang out. And it's it's been it's been awesome. And you'll have to come over for dinner again soon. Yes, we have to definitely. Okay. Um, um, yeah, Greg. Also, thanks to you. Your camera fixed itself in the end. Did you change something during the show? No, it's your dodgy setup. It's I fucking you. not, mate. It's Did pretty really? nice now, actually. Yeah, now it is. Oh, before, he, before he was like two bit Greg. But anyway, thanks again, Greg. I love you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> two bit Greg. <laughs> <laughs> um, thanks to everyone in the chat. Uh, thanks to all the team behind the scenes. Thanks to Jay, uh, who does the co producing with me on this, uh, edits all the tracks, does all the shit behind the scenes. Shout out to Cam and all the moderator team. You know who you are. I love you all um it's been a great show again not sure who the next guest is yet what the next show is yet i'm about to do a overhaul of the whole stream i'm about to install the roadcast roadcaster pro 2 instead of my sound setup so it might take a little bit of time but be assured that we'll be back with something real hot real soon um don't forget to check out the freak show event um keep an eye on our socials more information dropping on that very soon um we need to take unfortunately we need to have a picture for the thumbnail so nice cheesy picture picture for the thumbnail 
There we go. That'll do for that. That's that yes. done. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yay. And um, yeah, we will finish on something different, which today is Greg. I'll let you introduce oh. it because it's your shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Linen. So this is this is a guy called Linen. Um, the guy called Connor Mackey from um, uh, Chicago, who's a pretty cool multi instrumentalist. He's worked with or- orchestras. He plays in a jazz band, and this is his. Um, electronic IDME type stuff really nice interesting weird all sorts of noises bit of break core stuff going on it's a great album I would definitely check it out I think it's called lexicon um yeah came out I think last month or somewhere around there definitely worth checking out some really nice weird uh IDME cool stuff and a nice little video to go with it as well so yeah enjoy it's been a pleasure thanks everyone take, love you guys care, and everyone. Speak to you soon. thank you, you. See you soon. Um, Bye. 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 Bye.